Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cool Your Damn Jets. Um, it seems these days I keep finding <laughs> stories that irritate me, so I'm producing a lot of Cool Your Damn Jets. Um, today we're going to talk about Duolingo and Norwegian in, in general, and specifically Duolingo and Ninorsk. And the problem... Uh, that Duolingo is not supporting Nenorsk. Um, the lowdown for me is if you plan to learn Norwegian, try to find another resource than Duolingo. Um, I'm personally stuck with it right now, but you may find something better than Duolingo because they do not support Nenorsk. And I'm going to explain uh, the stupidity of that and um what i'm gonna do eventually uh, uh, so uh first of all i want to say that a similar argument could be made for uh duolingo teaching french canadian french um but i don't know if they've been offered a tree i have no idea nobody told me oh we've offered a tree to them and they refused um so um, I'm not going to get into that argument uh, today, but a similar argument could be made. Um, so what happened is that someone recently told me that they've offered a uh, Ninorsk tree to Duolingo. And I should probably explain for those of you who don't know anything about Norwegian, um, Norwegian has two written standards. There's Bookmall and uh, Ninorsk. And the Nenorsk um, tends to be devaluated by some people. Um, and I don't think that's correct. I don't think people should do that. Um, though both languages are thought at the national level in Norway, and you're supposed to be fluent in, well, I don't know the exact degree of fluency that be, they expect people to get, but you're supposed to learn both in school. Um, so someone offered Duolingo a Ninersh tree, and they already have a book model tree that works pretty well. Uh, there are some problems with it, but it's not a big deal. Um, and they refused. Duolingo refused the tree. They said, we don't want to have uh, Ninersh on our platform. And from what they understand, a big driver of that was the people doing the book model tree which have their own prejudice and decided to transfer it, transfer the prejudice to Duolingo. In my view, let me make sure that I'm not skipping notes there. Uh, yeah, in my view, that decision is indefensible for two reasons that are, you know, logical and inherent to Duolingo. Duolingo teaches imaginary languages. So you can go to Duolingo to learn Klingon. You can go to Duolingo to learn High Valerian. But Nenorsk, which is an actual human language, no. Um, and it teaches languages that are less spoken than Nenorsk. So if the argument was, well, Nenorsk is not spoken enough, um, I'm sorry, but Duolingo doesn't have the leg like, to stand on because they're teaching things that are less spoken than the Nersh is. Um, and I'm going to go to a little um, slide that I have here, um, which gives you um, fluent users. And I've put that in quotes because the problem... <laughs> We're trying to figure out how many users speak book, mall, Ninersk, and other languages as who do you count? Do you count the native users, the people who speak fluently? If you count the native users for Klingon, for instance, you're not <laughs> you're gonna have almost no one for Klingon. I'm I'm not saying that there's nobody who was taught Klingon from from infancy, but you're gonna have almost no one for Klingon uh, native users. And it's the same thing with High Valerian. So you have a problem there. How, what, how do you compare? I've gone with fluent users, which 
is, is still a bit problematic, but it's less problematic than just saying I'm going to count native speakers. So for book mall, and those numbers were clobbered from a, a various various different sources. And I cannot, you know, tell you I went to, to a specific site to get those numbers. I had to go to multiple different sites because there's nobody who has those numbers all set nicely together and done with the same methodology. Um, you know, the guy, the people who tell me how many book mall speakers there are, they don't know anything about Esperanto. And the people who do Esperanto don't probably don't know anything about book mall either. So um, I'm sorry, but that's, <laughs> that's the way it is. So for, for book model, you have almost 5 million users, um, daily usage. And for Ninoshka, you have half a million. And that, Ninoshka is much less used than book model. But that's a bit misleading because I, I told you earlier, in Norway, people uh, learn both languages in school. So the people who are fluent in one should be able to understand the other. Um, and then if you go down to ice, the, the, I put Icelandic there, uh, and I, I realized I made a mistake after I sent uh, my email to Duolingo. I complained about this problem, and I said, oh, you also teach Icelandic. Uh, no, they don't teach Icelandic, actually. <laughs> it's not on their, um, by, among their offerings. Um, but we have other examples, and under Icelandic, I have uh, Navajo which has, um, I mean, you could say 200 million native speakers and you'd be generous. Um, so they teach Navajo, which has less speakers than Ninorsk, uh, which is an actual human language. Um, so if the notion is like, well, there's not enough speakers of Ninorsk to make it worth our while, why do you teach Navajo? It has even less speakers. And then I have Esperanto there, which is a constructed language. Um, and it has, uh, it's, it's difficult, it's, it becomes difficult to calculate how many people speak the language. You know, I found a statistics that said 2,000 native speakers, children, maybe. Um, and then 100,000 users, um, which is still less than Navajo. Um, but you can get Esperanto from Duolingo. Um, and then there's Klingon, which and there the numbers are very <laughs> difficult to come by. And I found 12, 40, or 50, 60 fluent users. And those are, spe uh, those are people who are supposed to be able to express complete thoughts and complex thoughts in Klingon. And really, I have to wonder, because these are constructed languages, um, are there areas where those people would not be able to express themselves in Klingon? Because I've learned languages all of my life. And one thing that is difficult, and it's difficult even for me, going from English to French or French to English, is that, for instance, uh, home renovations. I didn't do any home renovations when I was in Quebec. Um, so I didn't do home renovations in French, but I do them here in the United States in English. And when I try to explain those things to my family in Quebec, I run into problems with vocabulary. And then I, then I have to, to think about it and wonder about Klingon. It's like there's no way Klingon has experts on all the, the, domain, the domains of knowledge of uh, humanity. Uh, you know, they may have somebody who creates a language and puts a grammar together um, and knows about linguistics, for instance, because he studied linguistics, so he can give names to linguistic terms. But if that person never did construction, he's not going to develop a whole vocabulary for construction. He's not going to develop a whole vocabulary for, for electrical engineering, physical engineering, medicine, philosophy, da 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 and stuff like that. So when they say there are maybe 50, 60 fluent users in Klingon, my question is, how much can they do in Klingon? I very much doubt that they could do the same thing as somebody who's fluent in in uh, Book Mall, for instance. And then the, the same problem is with the High Valerian. I just don't know how many 
Fluent users there are, I expect there's less than Esperanto and Klingon because it's newer, but I cannot tell you. And one of the things that I found online is like they compare how many users there are in Duolingo, they compare how many users there are of High Valerian with another existing human language or Klingon with another existing human language. And those statistics, in my opinion, are misleading because the only thing it tells you is how many people took a took, and they don't. They're not very, you know, complex uh, statistics. They don't say, well, how how many people completed the tree. They say how many people went into the tree and did something. So they could have done just one lesson and then they count, but they're not fluent. <laughs> Um, so you cannot go by those those numbers, in my opinion. Like if somebody just takes five lessons of High Valerian and it cannot speak, well, it's nice for them, but it's it's more or less a a, a waste of time because they're they're not fluent in the language and they cannot communicate with anyone else. Um, I mean, besides the very basic stuff they learned, and there's the same thing for Klingon. It's like if the person just took five lessons of Klingon, they're not going to be able to quote Shakespearean Klingon. I think it's been translate, translated to Klingon by uh, no doubt crazy people. Um, so, yeah, I think if people say, well, you cannot teach uh, Ninarsk because there's not enough native speakers. I think that's bunk. Or you cannot teach it, you know, because you're not going to have enough people taking it. I think that's also bunk because, I, in fact, you don't know how many people would take the Nenorsh course. Um, I would probably take it because I'm already taking Norwegian. I'm gonna gonna make this like go away. I'm already teach, get, t taking Pokemon, and I've also taken Swedish, um, which is similar to Norwegian. So there's a lot of synergy, and I watch shows in, in, in Swedish, and I can. I mean, it's I'm not fluent in Swedish by all means, but I can understand, and I can. Now sometimes I know that the <laughs> the subtitles uh, editors uh, took uh, liberties with uh, the translation. Um, that are, in my opinion, unjustified. Uh, you know, if some somebody say say ya in in uh, Norwegian, it means uh, not in, well in Norwegian and in Swedish, it means yes. And you just translate it as yes. You don't have to under translate it as I understand. <laughs> um, there's a way to say that in, in Norwegian and Swedish, but that's not it. Um, so there are places where I can detect, at least in Swedish. And also in Norwegian, and I'm better at Norwegian than Swedish, but I can detect um, problems with the translation. Um, so probably if they had an, an inertia tree, the people who are studying book mall should, would also benefit from it. And and that's the thing, like why Ninarsk? If you're studying book mall, why do you want to do Ninarsk also? Um, and the reason is that, I mean, I can see at least two reasons, and there are probably more, but that's the reasons for me. Uh, one is passing through the dialectal wall. Um, if you learn Norwegian, you learn very quickly if you watch TV that uh, people speak in their, their various native dialects, and some of the dialects can be very different. No way is not very big, but you can find substantial differences differences between dialects. And I hear them. I hear the differences. And uh, learning Ninorsk can help you understand spoken Norwegian with the dialects. It's not it's not a one for one match that you're gonna learn Ninorsk and then all the dialects are gonna be open to you, but it helps. You do whatever helps, and that helps. Um, another problem with insisting on book mall and setting Ninarsk aside is to um, 
what happens when you move if you move to Norway I'm not planning to move to Norway but I know people who plan to move to Norway and you move to Norway and you go in a region where the dialects there are more influenced by Denmark than they are influenced by Bukmal you're not speaking the, the, what your neighbors are speaking you speak you're speaking Bukmal and they probably can understand you but you know all the accommodations they have to make for you the stranger who come into their country um, you know they're not ignoring that and the chances are that you're gonna be if you have to stay there for a while I mean if you're just traveling do whatever you want don't even learn Norwegian I would say if you're just going to travel in Norway go with English and forget <laughs> about learning Norwegian which is the same advice I give people who want to come to Quebec don't learn French if you're just going to come and travel people are going to be able to accommodate you but if you're going to live there and this is as much true as Norway as it is in Quebec you should learn how your neighbors are speaking and if they speak Nenorsk in Norway then you should know Nenorsk you should be able to understand them and hopefully also produce in their dialect which might be more difficult but you shouldn't you shouldn't make the effort um so yeah i'm not i'm not happy with uh duolingo and its lack of support for nanorsk and i told them and so what does it mean for for me i'm a duolingo user and i don't think duolingo is the be all and end all of everything it's it's one tool among many i use other other learning tools like anki uh, i i've used books um i i watch tv in norwegian and in swedish unfortunately <laughs> I also watch it in Danish, but unfortunately, Danish is there's something going on with Danish. It's like it feels more distant than uh, Swedish and uh, Norwegian. I wish it were not the case, but it 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 feels different. And I'm starting to get better at understanding what they're saying, but it's it's still harder. So you know, I watch TV. Uh, and I'm getting better and better slowly and I don't have a timeline I don't need to be there in two months and no Norwegian uh, I'm just doing it at my own pace um, so what does it mean for me that Duolingo is not supporting in ours it means that I'm ne I need I'm opening up myself up to other learning opportunities in Duolingo so Duolingo is going is going to be de-emphasized at some point I cannot tell you when because unfortunately I already was using Duolingo before I started learning Norwegian and I have history with it in other languages which I'm probably going to abandon abandon at some point but um, and more importantly I have history with Norwegian in Duolingo so I'm I've done a good chunk of, of the tree I've done all the tree actually to level two and then I'm now I'm going again over the tree and finishing it um so you know if something comes up earlier and it seems amazing then i'm going to take it earlier i'm going to move away from duolingo earlier otherwise probably what i'm going to do is finish the book mall tree i've also was doing swedish but i've stopped that I've put Swedish on the back burner because I was ill and I had a lymphoma and I had chemo and stem cell transplant and, 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 I, and I didn't want to, to be overburdened with that. But now I'm thinking not to return to Swedish on Duolingo, finish Norwegian tree. And once I'm finished, uh, it's going to be over. Uh, you know, and I'm a subscriber to their stuff because I hate ads. And I don't want ads so I'm a subscriber and once everything is said and done I'm going to unsubscribe and uninstall the application and be on my merry way somewhere else to learn something else um, well I need to perfect my Norwegian and my Swedish and hope maybe my Danish um, but um, you know if I want to learn something else then Duolingo is not going to be 
my platform of choice. I'm going to try uh, another thing. Uh, and it may be something, some other platform that still doesn't have the Nenorsk uh, tree, but it pissed me so much that somebody was saying I was telling, I was offering them to make the tree, blah, 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 and they just said, no. Uh, our book mall folks are saying no, so it's no. Um, I think that's stupid idiotic, moronic. You can add the adjectives to that decision. Um, and I do not support it. And I'm, I'm, and now I'm also wondering, you know, I'm thinking about French Canadian. If somebody, if somebody presents them with a French Canadian tree, which teaches you how people speak in, in, in Canada, um, what their reaction is going to be. You know, if they say no to that too, um, you know, ultimately what you're promoting is um, a kind of, in, uh, there's a word for it, but I don't remember it. Uh, it's a, it's an insular, insular, I don't remember how to say it in English even. Uh, you're isolating yourself from the population around you. If you are learning, if you want to go to Quebec and you learn French, at some point you're going to have to learn how your neighbors are speaking and they're not speaking the same way as they're speaking in France. <laughs> Sometimes it can be very different. Like Gus in France is the kids, in Quebec is the testicles. It's not the same thing at all. Not even close. <laughs> um, so if somebody tells you gus, it means I, my testicles are hurting, uh, not my children are hurting or something like that. Um, so it's different. And it appalls me that Duolingo is, is taking that stance. Um, I understand they're a for-profit company. I'm a customer. I'm, I'm exercising my rights as a customer to be unhappy with their stance. Um, so again, the upshot for me, I mean, you, I've told you what I would do in the future. For you, if you want to learn um, Norwegian, uh, if Norwegian is in, in your future at all, and I didn't think that Norwegian was in my future, I've learned all kinds of languages. I learned Sanskrit, I was teaching Sanskrit. I learned Hindi, I didn't teach it though. I learned Mandarin, I was speaking Mandarin in Taiwan. I learned English. French is my native tongue. Uh, I learned Spanish and Portuguese, not, not, but not fluently. I, I'm, I'm not fluent in those languages. So I, I've learned a lot of languages. And I don't remember where I was going with that, but my recommendation, if, if no, and this is what I was always saying, if Norwegian is going to be at all in your future, and you may be surprised, <laughs> how it comes around, um, you may, you know, you may not be thinking, oh, I'm going to learn Norwegian now, but you don't know what the future holds. Um, you might want to look at another platform. Um, I wish I had done that and, and not being the, be in the grasp of uh, Duolingo. So that's, that's been going on long enough. We're almost half an hour. Um, so you can leave comments if you have problems with what I said. I think my reasoning is fine. I, you know, if you have problems with the numbers, I would advise you not to come and tell me, no, 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 there are so many. You can do it if you think it's going to make a difference uh, to my argument. If, it's, if there are 2,000... Navajo speakers, it makes no difference to my argument. So don't come and say, well, there are more speakers or less speakers, and then you look at the at the chart and it's the same argument. I don't want to get into that stuff. So if you want to make comments about that, you're not going to make comments for very long. Um, 
But otherwise, you know, intelligent comments are welcome. You can thumb up, thumb down the video, uh, and you can subscribe uh, to my channel if you want uh, uh, more rants about uh, this and that. Or sometimes I have a crank your damn jets to eleven when I like something, and right now I only have the nest protect on that list, but I will eventually soon. Uh, have my keyboard also on, on my wireless keyboard on that on that list because I, I like it quite a bit. Um, so uh, with this, uh, I'll say goodbye or goodbye with the other hand and uh, see you later.